Ah, Taco Bell, the creator of the Doritos Locos Tacos, the first vendor of Mountain Dew Baja Blast, and the first restaurant chain to capitalize on blockbuster movie openings to sell their product. It's a pioneer in the fast food restaurant industry like no other. So where did all this trailblazing come from? Well, it all begins with the taco, a traditional Mexican dish that gained mass popularity in the United States. In its country of origin, it's eaten as a hot, soft tortilla rolled around shredded meat and beans before being doused in any of a variety of sauces. In the US, however, it's known as a hard shell tortilla, bent in a deep U shape, filled with meat, cheese, tomatoes, and lettuce. No one really knows when the taco was created or even who specifically made it, only that it evolved from ingredients and technology readily available to the indigenous Mexicans long before the Spanish arrived. These tacos were also made with soft corn tortillas but filled with fish and cooked organs. Around the 18th century, tacos gained popularity among the Mexican working class, especially silver miners. This street food known as tacos de monero, or miners tacos, contained all the same ingredients as the original version but with a spicy filling inside the tortilla. This is the basis for two theories surrounding the origin of the word taco. One theory suggests that the taco is derived from the Nahuatl word talco, meaning half, or in the middle, in reference to where the food is placed in the tortilla. To be more specific, this Aztec language comes from the Nahuatl, a group of indigenous people native to southern Mexico and Central America, including the Aztecs. The other theory suggests that the word can more strongly be traced back to the Mexican silver miners of the 18th century who used the term as shorthand for a plug. These miners used explosive charges in plug form, consisting of gunpowder wrapped in paper, kind of like a taco, which were then inserted into rocks before detonation. But taco wasn't even a word that was used by Mexicans to describe the meal. It was instead used towards Americans so that they could know what the dish was while Mexican used other words to describe tacos that varied by region and local culture. Whatever the origins of its name, the street food's flavor was undeniable, prompting Mexican immigrants to bring the delicious food with them when they came to the United States for work. On the streets of Los Angeles in the early 1900s, Americans were treated to their first taste of the taco from Mexican food carts. The fillings were incredibly spicy and unfamiliar to the American palate. Tacos were the street food of the time since they were highly portable and cheap, and were considered exotic by any American that tried one. By 1920, the food that Mexican immigrants brought with them started to fuse with American ingredients. Organs were replaced with the more enticing ground beef and chicken, well, fillings like cheese, lettuce, and tomato became standard. This was known as the ultimate taco to Americans, whose traditional cuisine was flavored with more subtle flavors. The final touch was the pre-fried shell, finishing the taco that we came to know and love. But then something happened, and the taco entered the scene in a major way in the 1940s, as there was a way to speed up the taco making process. It wasn't long before the dish spread far outside of Mexican American communities to find another cook who would put their own spin on the delicacy. The story of Taco Bell begins with Glenn Bell, its founder. Bell originally owned and operated a hamburger stand called Bell's Hamburgers and Hot Dogs, which was built in 1948 on the border of San Bernardino and Colton. Inspired by his neighbors at Mitla Cafe, Bell expanded his menu to feature Mexican-influenced dishes, including his take on the crunchy taco in 1951. This helped him to distinguish himself from his rivals. In 1954, he opened Bell's Drive-In and Taco Tia in the San Bernardino area. Taco Tia, his first taco stand, sold crunchy tacos for 19 cents or $2.77 today. The hard shell helped keep operating costs down and would later make it much easier 
to mass produce tacos in America. Bell was a member of partnerships that owned Taco Tia and El Taco, both of which had multiple Southern Californian locations. In 1962, after selling his stake in El Taco, he opened the very first Taco Bell restaurant at 7112 Firestone Boulevard in Downey, California, as the sole owner and proprietor. It was a simple, humble 20 by 20 foot building, which served customers who frequently mispronounced the dish as tacos, but soon it began to gain popularity all the same. And then something amazing happened when retired Los Angeles policeman Kermit Becky became his first franchisee in 1964, opening a restaurant in Torrance, California. Then, just three years later, Taco Bell opened its 100th restaurant at 400 South Brookhurst, Anaheim. By 1970, Taco Bell had grown to over 300 restaurants across the Western United States, which is when Bell decided to take the company public. In 1978, Bell sold 868 Taco Bell restaurants to Pepsi Cola for around $125 million and became a Pepsi Cola shareholder in the process. It was this sale that rocketed Taco Bell from a regional hit to a national sensation. Throughout the 1980s and 1990s, Taco Bell began introducing fast food items and marketing concepts. One of their biggest campaigns was their promotion of the 1989 Batman movie, pioneering the concept of linking fast food marketing with major blockbusters. It was a huge success, bringing attention to Taco Bell on a national stage as it introduced the value menu in 1990 and then Taco Bell Express in 1991. Other notable movies were introduced as the Taco Salad and the Taco Bell Grande in 1984. Their sponsoring of the first ESPN X Games in 1995 also brought them to a whole new client group. And then there was the Gordita sensation shortly after in 1998. Back in 1995, however, Taco Bell joined forces with KFC as part of a branding partnership and just two years later, both became subsidiaries of the Tricon Global Restaurants, later Yum Brands. This all happened obviously when it split from PepsiCo, the major conglomerate. Then, at the turn of the century, Taco Bell continued to brand and market itself to bring in even more customers. For example, in 2001, Taco Bell promised everyone in the US a free taco if Mir, the falling Soviet space station, hit a place owned by the company in the Pacific Ocean. In 2004, the fast food chain partnered with Mountain Dew to release that Mountain Dew Baja Blast, which for a period of time at least was only available at Taco Bell. In 2007, free tacos were again promised as a promotion with Major League Baseball. For every stolen base in the World Series, every person in the United States would get a free taco, dubbed, quote, steal a base, steal a taco. The promotion was so popular, it continued into the following World Series. It was even carried over to the NBA, where it was renamed Steal a Game, Steal a Taco. For if a visiting team won during the NBA Finals, in 2009, Taco Bell cemented its place in the NBA, becoming its official fast food partner and replacing its old competitor, McDonald's. Over the next decade, Taco Bell kept innovating, providing new foods and new ways to order them. As a part of a promotion with Frito-Lays, 10,000 Dorito Lacos Tacos were flown by helicopter to the remote town of Bethel, Alaska. Made with a Dorito nacho cheese shell, it quickly became one of the company's most popular items. And then, as if the company couldn't be more successful, Taco Bell began offering breakfast in 2014. Putting a spin on classic breakfast food with its waffle taco and the AM crunch wrap. In 2015, the franchise released its vegan and vegetarian menu. In 2016, the queso lupa, a shell stuffed with melted pepper jack cheese, was introduced and just two years later, Taco Bell made history by launching Nacho Fries, its most successful product launch ever. On the distribution side, in 2010, Taco Bell's website was launched, informing customers on their food, job openings and locations. Mobile ordering became a reality in 2015 through the Taco Bell app, the first of its kind in the fast food industry. And just a year later, Taco Bell delivery hit the scene 
And this was the same time as the new Taco Bell website was born. Well, you may think you know all Taco Bell has to offer. Guess again, the fast food franchise has plenty of tricks up its sleeve. Taco Bell actually has a secret menu with a variety of unique and customizable items that aren't even listed on the regular menu. These include some popular items like the Cheeserito, Enchirito, and the Quesadilla Burger. The restaurant chain has also experimented with some other unique menu items, such as Cheeto Burritos, Captain and Crunch Delight, and even a taco shell made entirely of fried chicken. And if that isn't enough, you should also know that many Taco Bell locations are open late, maybe even 24 hours a day, making this a good choice for late night eats. And hence, on top of pioneering in fast food and marketing, Taco Bell has always been a prolific organization that has remembered its history. And they've also given back to their communities. For example, in 1992, the Taco Bell Foundation unveiled its Team Supreme program, partnering with Boys and Girls Clubs of America. In 2002, donations to the Taco Bell Foundation hit $10 million, providing support for more than 500,000 at-risk teens in the Teen Supreme program. In 2015, the Live Moss Scholarship was launched, empowering the next generation with the money needed in their academic journey. Taco Bell provides scholarships to over 100 students each year, relieving thousands of dollars of burden from their higher education. Now the company is committed to raising $100 million, not just for its own programs, but the programs of 400 of its nonprofit partners as well. The company is also active in its own preservation efforts. For example, the first Taco Bell location in Downey, California, known as Numero Uno, was in danger of being demolished. This tiny Taco Bell operated until 1986, when it was closed due to the popularity of larger restaurants with indoor seating and drive throughs Surprisingly, other taco restaurants set up shop inside its walls until it was closed for good in December of 2014, with plans for new development causing the building to face demolition. But rather than just letting it get destroyed, Taco Bell uprooted the building from the ground, foundation intact and all, and then transported this historic monument to its headquarters in Irvine, California. Some other notable marketing efforts included its first ever retail collaboration with Forever 21 in 2017, after which the men's collection sold out online within the first day. They've hosted weddings at the Las Vegas Cantina, and then there's Gidget, the Chihuahua. Yo quiero Taco Bell. The controversial star of Taco Bell's commercials in the late 90s, which was accused of being a cultural stereotype. Thanks to its innovative menu items, affordable prices, and unique promotional efforts, Taco Bell has earned its spot among the greatest in the fast food industry, especially within the United States. The company has captured the taste buds of millions in more than 25 countries, earning more than $10 billion in annual revenue with more than 7,000 locations and 350 franchises worldwide. Taco Bell serves more than 40 million customers a week and more than 2 billion customers a year, which I suppose is a fact that brings us full circle. So I thank you all for watching, hitting that subscribe button, sharing your video ideas in the comments section below. And until next time, this is Ryan Sokash signing off.